Ladies and gentlemen, our next video comes from the governor of Louisiana and explains how Bobby Jindal would bring opportunity for all and favoritism to none. Hi, I'm Bobby Jindal. Look, I think the best way to provide opportunity for everybody is pretty simple. We've got to cut the government economy and grow the American economy. It's as simple as that. Now, remember when President Obama was complaining about the debt going to $9 trillion when he was campaigning for president? Now our debt's over $18 trillion and counting. The reality is we have supersized government. It is time to cut the taxes, the regulations, the government spending, free up the American entrepreneurial spirit, and grow the American economy. I've unveiled a plan, for example, on energy independence that would harness our natural resources and bring a manufacturing renaissance back to America. Here in Louisiana, we've actually cut our government. We've cut our state government's budget by 26%. We've got 30,000 fewer state government bureaucrats than the day I took office. There are a lot of folks running for president that talk about cutting government. I'm the only one that's actually cut government. As a result, here in Louisiana, we're a top 10 state for private sector job growth. Eight credit upgrades. After 25 years of out-migration, seven years in a row of in-migration, we've got more people working and living in Louisiana earning a higher income than ever before. So it's pretty simple. We've got to cut the government economy and grow the American economy. It's either or. It's like the laws of gravity, we've got a choice to make. I think it's time to cut the government economy, grow the American economy, let's rescue the American dream. It's not about government dependence, it's not about becoming the European nightmare. Thank y'all very much. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage, Governor Bobby Jindal. Thank you all very, very much. Thank you all for having me. Governor, your first question tonight will come from Debbie. Hi, Governor Jindal. You wrote a New York Times op-ed telling any corporation that contemplates bullying the state of Louisiana on the issue of marriage to save its breath. As president, what could you do to address the emerging alliance between cultural progressives and corporate America? That's a great question. You know, I've often said the Republican Party is rightfully not the party of big government. But we can also not become the party of big business either. There is a dangerous alliance, an unholy alliance, between big business and the radical left. And these big businesses need to understand this. The same radical left that doesn't like religious liberty, they don't like profit either. The same radical left that's going after Christians and our First Amendment rights, they want to tax and regulate these businesses out of existence. Folks, we need to wake up. The idea of America is slipping away. They want to put, now think about this today. If you share our nation's secrets, you can run for president. But if you're against gay marriage, they put you in jail. Christians face discrimination. Christians face discrimination. If you want to be a baker, a florist, if you want to be a caterer, now the left wants to say you've got to choose between your conscience and operating your business. The reality is they're going to come after pastors and churches and all of us. Two things we need to remind them. The United States of America did not create religious liberty. Religious liberty created the United States of America. You asked me what I could do as president. On my first day as president, I would sign an executive order saying that the United States government will not discriminate against Christians for having a traditional view of marriage. That means the IRS can't come after us. That means the EPA can't come after us. That means the DOJ can't come after us. And by the way, Planned Parenthood better hope. They better hope that Hillary Clinton wins this election. Because under President Jindal, we're going to send the IRS, the Department of Justice, the EPA, OSHA, and everybody else we can find to go after Planned Parenthood instead of harassing innocent Christians.
Governor, even with a strong executive, it can be difficult to get things passed through an obstinate legislature. In Louisiana, the state legislature refused to pass your uh, bill, which would have eliminated the income tax. You were a co-sponsor, I think actually an original sponsor, of President Bush's plan to have Social Security personal accounts. What have you learned from those experiences, and how can voters be confident you'll get your ideas passed into law? Well, look, two things. So one, in Louisiana, we've enacted the largest income tax cut in our state's history. We have cut our state budget 26 percent, 30,000 fewer state bureaucrats, the largest school, uh, statewide school choice program where the dollars follow the students instead of the students following the dollars. We've been rated the most pro-life state six years in a row since I've been governor. But folks, let's be honest. When it comes to fixing what's in D.C., it is time to fire everybody in Washington, D.C. I am angrier with the Republicans than I am with the Democrats. Let's be honest, you've got a choice today. You've got honest socialists on the left, and you've got lying conservatives on the right. I mean, give Bernie Sanders credit. At least he's honest about what he wants to do. I mean, Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, they're no better, but at least he's honest. And, and by the way, a socialist is running for president and doing well. If you wanted to know how bad we are, that's all you need to know. But the Republicans are worse. They're the surrender caucus. They told us, give us the majority. They told us they would get rid of Obamacare and amnesty. They gave up before the fight started. Mitch McConnell's already given up the fight to defund Planned Parenthood. They refuse to stand against this bad deal that will allow Iran to become a nuclear power. If there was ever a time to use the nuclear option, now would be the time to stop Iran from becoming a nuclear power. Folks, they're the surrender caucus. I wish they had half the guts, half the courage, half the backbone the Democrats had. You never heard, when they lost the Senate election in Massachusetts, you didn't hear President Obama say, well, Obamacare's dead. They forced it down our throats. Now, I don't like anything Harry Reid or Nancy Pelosi or Barack Obama has done, but I admire their guts. I wish the Republicans in D.C. had half the courage, half the conviction to fight for us. It is time to get the idea of America back. The only way we're going to do it is term limits, is to fire these fools, make them live under the same laws they apply to the rest of us. Founding fathers never intended these folks to go there, have permanent jobs, six-figure salaries, become seven-figure lobbyists. It is time to bring them home. It is time to say that we need limited government. The Republicans don't even shrink the size of government. They slow the growth rate. They call that a victory. After these barbaric videos, if we can't win the fight to defund Planned Parenthood, if we can't stand for innocent human life, it is time to close up shop. It is time to just quit the Republican Party and start a new party. We have got to be able to win on this issue. Governor, your answer raises an interesting question. Assuming that everybody in Washington doesn't, as you suggest, get fired in 2016, how would President Bobby Jindal get this Republican uh, Congress to enact your conservative vision to fight and win conservative politics. Well, you know, the good news is we got a bunch of followers, not leaders in Congress. You know, they don't know what to do. They just follow whoever's in charge. The reality is this. As president, the first day, we can repeal those illegal executive orders this president put in place. We can rein in the EPA. We can sign an executive order protecting religious liberty. We can repeal all of Obamacare. We can actually have energy independence. We can have a lower, flatter tax code. But this is how we get it done. There is one thing and one thing only these politicians understand. They're in it for self-survival. 
We tell them it's real simple. You either do what we want, or we're marching on Washington, D.C., and taking our government back. It is too important to leave to the politicians. I think we have a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to implement our conservative principles. Look, the idea of America is slipping away from us. $18 trillion of debt, Planned Parenthood ripping apart babies and selling their organs across the country, a president who's declared war on trans fats and a truce with Iran. A president who won't even say the words radical Islamic terrorism, a Supreme Court that thinks they're smarter than God and can redefine marriage. You've got the left wanting to take God out of the public square. You've got, you've got Republicans competing with Democrats to see how much of our money we can, they can borrow and spend over $18 trillion of debt with no plan to pay it back. The idea of America is slipping away. But folks, we have a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to apply our conservative principles. We best not give it away. We best not waste it. And it's not just the Democrats standing in the way, it's the establishment, it's the Republicans standing in the way. Those reforms we got done in Louisiana, my first term, we had a Democratic majority in the House and the Senate. I lied out and vetoed more my first year than anybody had done before me, years put together. They tested me. And once we showed them we weren't going to raise taxes, we were going to shrink the government economy and grow the American economy, they got it. And if this Congress tries to test President Jindal, they'll find out that I'm serious. Just like Ronald Reagan was serious, I'm serious. I'm not getting, look, I'm not running for office to make incremental changes. If you want somebody to go to D.C. and manage the slow decline of the greatest country in the history of the world, Go vote for somebody else. If you want somebody that will say and do the things you're not supposed to be able to do and say, if you want somebody that's going to take on the D.C. establishment, if you want somebody who's running without permission from headquarters, I'm asking you to join our cause, join the Bobby Jindal campaign, believe again in America. Governor, our next question comes from Twitter. I note beforehand, Barack Obama said recently that Obamacare is working exactly as it's supposed to, and in some ways better than it was expected to. Brings us to our question. Will you work to fully repeal Obamacare on day one and allow the free market to lower prices and increase quality of care? Absolutely. Of course it's working. Look, of course it's working exactly as he intended. He wants us dependent on government. Look, he went to the Catholic Health Association, made the moral case for Obamacare. Obamacare, it is immoral. It puts bureaucrats between you and your doctors. It, de it increases dependence on government. It spends money we don't have. It, it raises taxes. It redistributes. It is immoral to spend our children's and grandchildren's money. But even more dangerously, even more dangerously, it is the largest expansion of government and decrease of freedom we have seen in a generation. Now, I am the only candidate with a detailed plan to get rid of Obamacare. I'm not talking about Obamacare light. Too many Republicans want to be cheaper versions of the Democratic Party. We don't need a second liberal party. Look, Jeb Bush said we got to be willing to lose the primary in order to win the general election. I disagree with that. That is the establishment telling us that we have to hide our conservative beliefs. We have to try to get the left and the media to like us. Folks, I'm here to tell you that never works. If we do that again, we will lose again. We will deserve to lose again if we try to do that again. We don't need to be cheaper Democrats. We don't need to be a second liberal party. I've got an idea. What if we endorsed our own principles for a change? You know, I can't emphasize this enough. This is a critical time for our country. This isn't about the saving the future of the Republican Party. It's about saving the future of the United States.
Conservative principles aren't dead here in South Carolina, in Louisiana, Iowa, New Hampshire, in America. They're only dead in D.C. We've got a bunch of fools in D.C. Let's, let's be honest. They were happy the Supreme Court ruled against us on marriage and Obamacare. Only in D.C. is losing a good thing. They didn't want to do the hard work to repeal Obamacare. They think marriage is a distraction. They have given up on trying to get rid of universal coverage. They've given up trying to repeal this new entitlement plan. They have given up on fighting for freedom and smaller government. When did we decide to give up on our conservative beliefs? When did we decide to throw in the towel? I don't know about you, I didn't get that memo. Conservative values are still alive and well. That is why it is time to fire these fools in Washington, D.C. Governor, what would you say to some people, many Republicans, who would say there's no way politically to repeal Obamacare unless we match the left person for person in terms of coverage? This is one of the most frustrating arguments I hear from my own party. Once the Democrats have set a new level of dependence, Republicans say, well, we can't go below that. Folks, if that's really true, and I said this earlier, I mean this, if we really believe that, let's fold up the Republican Party. We're just wasting everybody's time, and there's no point in having a second political party. <laughs> President Obama is changing the American dream into the European nightmare. The American dream is not to have the government take care of you. The American dream is not to take somebody else's hard-earned money to subsidize your lifestyle. The American dream is that we will give you opportunity. We will give you the chance to work hard, to get a great paying job, to take care of your family. And if the Republican Party doesn't have the backbone to stand up for the American dream, what good is the Republican Party? Socialism is immoral for tax, it's bad for taxpayers. Socialism is bad for the people it pretends to help. This is not sustainable. This idea that we can keep spending and taxing and borrowing and regulating more than we've ever done before. That's not what made America great. The Founding Fathers created a limited government to secure, not create, our God-given rights. If the Republican Party says once the Democrats expand government, we can never reduce government. Once they increase dependence, we can never reduce dependence. As a country, we're done. That's Europe. The future is Europe. That must not be America's future. Our best days must still be ahead of us. Look, there's no more important issue in this election. Four more years of these policies, we will have a generation of Americans who won't even remember the American dream. My parents came here 45 years ago. They came here legally, by the way. <laughs> My parents came here 45 years ago to chase freedom and opportunity. They have lived the American dream. They've caught the American dream. That is what I want for us, for my children, and one day for my grandchildren. Shame on us if we're not willing to stand up against socialism and say it's immoral, it is wrong, and there is a better way forward for the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the stage, Governor Nikki Haley. Thank you, and welcome back to South Carolina, Bobby. We're always happy to see you. Great to see you, Nikki. So, you know, if you look at um, Governor General, as one of the younger governors coming up, we always look to what Governor General was doing in Louisiana. But what one of the most amazing things is we look at the spending, we look at how he cut government, we look at all the things that he did to really lift up Louisiana. But the first thing, one of the very first things he did that you haven't talked about was ethics reform. Now, in South Carolina, we've tried to fight for at least three years now to have legislators have to disclose their income, to get uh, legislative lawyers to quit suing our state, to disclose all those things so that they have a site, a body that oversees them and transparent. Will you tell them about all the things you did with ethics reform in the state of Louisiana? Because you really had a very corrupt system that you walked Absolutely. in. Absolutely. And I want to, first of all, commend your great governor, Nikki Haley. Hasn't she done a great job for the people of South Carolina? I teased her, she, she was nice, she introduced me as a young governor. I teased her, I was the youngest governor in America until she got elected, so I was a little upset with her for that. 
We did do ethics reforms. The reason, now look, everybody's got their favorite joke about Louisiana politicians. Billy Tozan said at any given moment of time, half his constituents were underwater, the other half were under indictment any given moment of time in Louisiana. <laughs> Here is the problem. Business has told us one of the number one reasons they weren't investing in my state was corruption. If who you know is more important than what you know, they didn't want to invest in Louisiana. I called a special session within 30 days of taking the oath of office. Politicians don't like it. I said, look, when you shove the hogs away from the trough, they're going to squeal when you do that. We went from the bottom five to the top five. We went from 44th worst to number one, according to the Center for Public Integrity for Legislative Disclosure. Fantastic. Now, this is instructive for D.C. for two reasons. One, how we did it, and secondly, what we need to do in D.C. One, how we did it. We did it because we mobilized the people. Look, legislators, politicians, don't want to give up their perks, their privileges. But I said, we're going to keep coming back. I'm going to call you back in the session again and again and again until you pass these bills. And I'm not going home. I said, I live in Baton Rouge. I've got nowhere else to go. But we mobilized the people. They came to the Capitol and said, we elected you to serve us, not yourselves. Here's the lesson for D.C. I told you we need term limits. But we also need part-time congressmen. We need to pay them a per diem, not a six-figure salary. We need a ban on them becoming lobbyists so they actually go and live in the real economy under the same rules they apply for the rest of us. We need a two-thirds vote before they ever raise any of our taxes, a two-thirds vote before they grow the government's budget faster than the American economy, and, and I would also say this. I would pay them a per diem, but I would only pay them for every day they stay out of D.C. rather than pay them for every day they go to D.C. Folks, the corruption in both parties is such the lobbyists are running the place. All the lot they get special interest exemptions in the tax code, in the spending bills, in the laws. That's why I say both parties. We need to clean house in both parties and remind them they work for us, not the big money interests, and not themselves. So as if that wasn't enough, you also worked hard on reforming education. And I want to ask you, because Secretary Clinton says that the true solution to reforming education is in the teachers' unions. <laughs> Do you want to address that? Well, look, it got so bad in Louisiana. Like I told you, we fought so that the dollars follow the child instead of the child following the dollars. What that means, we trust every mom and dad to know what's best for their children. It may be homeschooling, it may be private schools, it may be charter schools, it may be public schools, dual enrollment programs, online programs. The point is you know your children best. And yes, we got rid of Common Core, but it was more than just getting rid of Common Core. But the teacher unions, they saw this as a threat to their power. Not only did they try to recall me and the Speaker of the House, they had so many protesters come so often, I begin to tell my young children, Whenever you see a picture of daddy, that's just a parade for daddy. That's why they're out there. <laughs> but this was the most instructive comment. A teacher union's leader said this. They said, parents don't have a clue when it comes to making choices for their kids. I met with a group of moms the next day. They said, Governor, we make choices for our kids every day. And we know the needs of our kids better than those bureaucrats in Baton Rouge or Washington, D.C. But the fight about education reform is a great parallel. I can't summarize better the difference between us and the left. They honestly don't think we're smart enough to live our lives. They don't think we're smart enough to decide how our children should be educated. They don't think we're smart enough to make curriculum decisions. They don't think we're smart enough to decide what school lunches our children should be eating. They don't. I mean, they don't think we're smart enough to have Second Amendment rights, First Amendment religious liberty rights. They don't think you're smart enough to know how many Cokes to drink if you live in New York City. They don't think we're smart enough to know what kind of insurance to buy. And that's how you get this screwed up common core math where you no longer add up numbers in a column the way that you and I learn math.
My little boy, my youngest, he was seven at the time. He was in second grade. He had the best answer. to He took apart Common Core better than anybody I've ever seen. He had a math test, and he brought it home, and the teacher didn't know what to do with it. She sent it home. My wife said, you need to talk to your son. <laughs> yeah, when he's my son, that's never a good sign. I knew that. I mean, that was pretty obvious. He had gotten all the math right. He got all the answers right. It was simple math. You add the numbers in a column, and you carry over the digits. It was simple math, like the way you and I learned. The second half of the test said, now explain why your answers are right. And they had six steps, like you had to draw circles and rectangles. So 18 plus 4 becomes 20 minus 2 plus 4, and you have to draw this multi-step process. I love my little boy. He has the attention span of a gnat. (laughs) This is what he wrote for every... The teacher said, show why your answers are right, meaning using this common core methodology. He said, just because it is. For every single matter. That is not the first or last time I was reminded. My, he's now nine. My little nine-year-old boy is smarter than Secretary Clinton. I will say this, it is time to shrink the Federal Department of Education and give control of education back to moms and dads, not a bunch of bureaucrats in D.C. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We call him Get It Done, Bobby, because he doesn't talk.